Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we give you a piece of breaking news from Globe magazine. What can Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, learn from the Johnny Depp libel trial taking place in London? There are many versions of the truth. However much people swear on religious texts that they will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, everyone will have a slightly different memory of the events in question. Whether Meghan's friends are named or not makes little difference in the case. They will have to give evidence under oath. If they lie, they are guilty of another crime called perjury, compounding the issue. One of the friends has apparently claimed she used to speak to Meghan every day. Are we honestly to believe that she, this friend, never told Megan that she had been asked questions by People magazine? Never in all of their daily conversations did Megan ask what she spoke to people about? And if that's the case, why, as a first instance, didn't Megan sue the friend for disclosing private information to a public source? After all, Thomas only sold the letter to the Mail on Sunday after the publication of People magazine with all the comments from Meghan's friends, so there was plenty of time to bring a case against the five. On the other hand, maybe this friend is lying and she rarely spoke to Meghan and just said what she thought was right and appropriate at the time. Problem for Meghan is what happens in court and what is revealed deliberately or inadvertently by the various witnesses, including Thomas Markle, if he's called to give evidence. And what about Omid Scobie? What evidence will he give? This is from an article published in February 2019. So Meghan has known Omid's take on the issue since then, and still she's going ahead. Certain parts of Meghan's letter directly dispel certain claims Mr. Markle has previously made to media outlets. Omid Scobie, royal contributor for the American network ABC's Good Morning America, believes Meghan had this in mind when she was writing the letter. According to Mr. Scobie, Meghan knew her letter would be leaked to the public via her father and used it as a chance to set the record straight. If Omid, who after all is a personal friend of Meghan, claims Meghan knew her father would leak the letter, what does she hope to achieve except notoriety? Oh yes, and if she loses, she'll be completely broke. I doubt her father-in-law will come to her aid. If she does not learn that anything can come out in court, and so much will be to her detriment, she is still living in cloud cuckoo land, or la-la land, as of course she is. Clever lawyers won't deter her inflated idea of her place in society, which is currently rather low. Strangely, as the details of the Depp Heard case become public, she was the first person I thought of. Harry's bruised hands, hangdog glazed expressions. Would someone of his background, not so much royal family, but army, admit to spousal abuse? There is so much more to this saga, and we will tend to think of blackmail of some sort. Why do we still tend to think like this? Because Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are still receiving UK funding through Prince Charles, according to the CEO of Republic. Republic campaigns for the Queen to be replaced with an elected Democratic head of state and for the monarchy to be abolished. Graham Smith, the organization's CEO, told Globe magazine that the UK is still losing despite Meghan Markle and Prince Harry moving to America as the Prince of Wales continues to help fund them. Mr. Smith said Prince Charles' funds are from the Duchy of Cornwall. The Duchy of Cornwall belongs to us. We are giving him more than 20 million pounds a year from the Duchy of Cornwall profits. We are not charging him corporation tax, and he will then get a tax break on claiming the costs of supporting his son and daughter-in-law. So, we still lose from Charles funding their lifestyle. This is the way the royals work. They have a deep sense of entitlement. They just do not see why they should have to live on less than a multi-million pound fortune, so they always find a way to ensure that they are funded beyond the dreams of your average person. In May, a royal commentator stated that Meghan Markle and Prince Charles are still receiving £2 million a year from the Prince of Wales. Royal expert Charles Ray told Talk Radio's Mike Graham that in the UK, it's still paying for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's security. Mr. Ray stated that Prince Charles agreed to give the Duke and Duchess of Sussex £2 million to help with their security costs despite the couple choosing to relocate to the United States. Mr. Graham asked, why are we still, as far as we know, paying out a bit for their security? 
Mr. Ray said, we are because at the moment, Prince Charles is giving them two million pounds a year. It's going to be looked at in another 12 months. It's to help pay for some of that security so they are getting money. The problem with them is that they first moved to Canada and then to the United States because they were going to start careers. Meghan was presumably going to go back into showbiz and then along comes coronavirus and squashes all their plans. Everybody's plans have been screwed up and they are no different. I don't know where they're going to get the money though in the future. Why is the media strategically trying to destroy the union of Harry and Meghan, even though they have left the UK to pursue an independent life in America? A royal expert explains, the British media are not trying to destroy the union, as far as I can see. I think the reason people in general are perturbed by the Sussexes is because they have stressed they want to live independent, non-working royal lives, which means not carrying out any more royal duties on behalf of the UK and therefore sourcing their own income. However, they still expect others to pay for that non-working royal life, namely the UK taxpayer, taxpayer who still funds their massive global security bill and Daddy Charles, who contributes to their non-working existence, plus others who are currently willing to lend them expensive accommodation, etc. Add to that, the Sussex is continually projecting themselves for their own purposes into the media's eyes. Their supporters often ask, why are the Sussexes being treated so differently from the Cambridges? Well, that's an obvious one. The Cambridges are still actively working royals who obviously try to toe the royal line and meet their contract with the British people. There is not some other sinister reason, as some try to suggest. And this is my observation as someone who is not a blatant royalist. My humble advice to the Sussexes, start to live your own independent life and start to earn all your own money like the rest of us independents. Now is the time for you to throw away your royal crutches, your entitlements. Maybe then all media sources will ignore you. But folks, do you think that's really what the Sussexes want? Personally, I don't think so. Here's a comment from a royal fan. Exactly. If you had an employee who complained, didn't want to do the job, but expected the perks and privileges, that person would be fired. Of course, the employee who works hard, follows the company rules, and with a positive attitude is going to perceive, be perceived well by the higher ups. However, you said it best. One couple are working royals and the other have left. In what world can you leave your job and expect all the income and perks to continue? The Sussexes are actually breaking one of the cardinal rules for networking. Do not burn your bridges. How about you? What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below and let's discuss them together. Remember to like and share this with anyone you think would also love it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. As always, come back to our channel for the latest news on the royal family right here. Thanks for watching.